Today on Bridges. It's that when we're in God's presence, that His patient, that His slow to anger character is formed in us. Not that we're just working really hard to be Christians, because I've done that too, and that's really hard. We are so glad that you could join us for Bridges today. Today we're going to talk about what to do when you don't know what to pray. I'm so glad that all of you could come out and be with us at WHTN today as well. And I'm sure that I'm not the only person that's ever been in a situation where you think, I just don't know what to pray. I mean, we know and we are confident in God's word that says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much, or in other, word, in other words, makes a great difference. We know that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will pray through us with groanings, with uttering utterances that we don't even know. And yet there's those times in our human words and our human language that we think, what should I pray? I mean, we might be looking at a situation that we think X, Y, Z needs to be done when really what we're looking at is a symptom of a problem, that there's something deeper or something different. And so in those cases, I always know that if we want to be sure that we're praying God's will, when we pray God's word, we can be 100% sure that we are praying uh, God's will. And so uh, a few months ago, I went and I did a women's conference at a local church and a woman messaged me back after that conference and she, she gave me this scripture out of Colossians that I've read and I'm sure that you've read many, many times. But she said, you know, I, I prayed this scripture over my family members and I just insert their names. And so I started reading over this particular passage of scripture and it's a prayer of Paul to the church at Colossus, and he is talking about praying for them. And I thought today on Bridges that we could open up conversation about those times in our lives when we don't know exactly what to pray, what could we pray? And this passage covers every single thing in the whole wide world that we could ever be facing. So look with me at Colossians 1, uh, and we are going to start with verse 9. And it says there, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. So let's think about that for just a moment here. Who of us couldn't benefit from complete knowledge, right, of God's will? And who wouldn't need spiritual wisdom and understanding. I mean, whether we are making a move or relocating for a job, whether we're thinking about maybe starting a business or a financial decision, even if it's something in our thoughts that we think about, if it's worry, if it's a concern, wouldn't having complete knowledge of God's will make all the difference? I can't tell you how many people that I've talked to and that I've said in my own head, I would do God's will if I just knew what he wanted, <laughs> if I just knew what was next. How many times have I thought, well, you know, if I just had uh, more wisdom, wouldn't that have made all the decision? And so sometimes those thoughts, and I think most of us, if we're honest, have these kind of thoughts. What's going to happen next? What happens if I miss God? What about X, Y, Z? prodigal? What if this happens? What if that happens? And I know for me, if I don't take those thoughts captive, if I don't make an effort to stop those thoughts in their tracks, my mind can go forever and ever. How about yours? Maybe my mind is like the energizer bunny. It just doesn't stop. And sometimes I just have to stop and I have to say, you know, this is not healthy. This is not biblical. God's word tells me not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. So worrisome thoughts, you're going to have, we, like we have got to stop. We have got to press the stop button here and we've got to move on with something else. So what I do, especially if I'm in a season of suffering or I've got concerns going on that are outside of my control, and you all, whether we think it or not, everything is outside of our control. 
I think sometimes that, you know, um, I'm just an overachiever at being a perfectionist, a control freakazoid kind of a person. And God has to gently and yet sometimes firmly help me to understand that all of my best efforts, I can't control people. I can't control situations. What I can do is I can trust him. And when I don't know what to pray, I can make myself focus by discipline, by an act of my own will on his word. And so sometimes before I leave the house in the morning, if I've been meditating on a scripture, I will take a picture of that scripture so that it's in my phone. And that way throughout the day, wherever I am, when that worry comes to knock on the, the door of my heart, when that concern wants to pop it back, back self, have you ever been in the situation where you're just busy doing something and all of a sudden that thought comes? And you think that person is not going in the way that I know that God would want them to go or that bill is bigger than what we were expecting or like whatever that is. And so I look for ways to remind myself of God's word wherever I am. And many times that means looking at it on the phone because it's like, who goes anywhere without their phone these days, right? right? I try to remind myself and get the scripture out and I begin to pray it. And if I can pray it out loud, then I do that because when I'm speaking out loud, it's harder for my energizer bunny mind to go. But if I can't pray out loud, like if I'm not in a situation like that, then I recite it in my heart and in my head. And the scripture goes on in verse 10 and it says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. So isn't that like the most wonderful thing ever to live a life that would fully honor and please the Lord? Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? What person would this scripture, if we're praying it over ourselves or someone else, isn't this the whole goal, the whole mission of the whole thing is that for a follower of Jesus Christ, that we would live a life that would fully honor and please him? I know that even serving the Lord, and now it's been more than 40 years, I have not always lived a life that would fully honor or please him. Sometimes people look at those great big things, you know, that like killing someone or the, worry is a sin. If I look at the amount of worry that I've done over the years as a believer, the amount of care that I've held in my heart that I allow to choke out the joy of my salvation sometimes, that's not a life that fully honors or pleases the Lord. That's saying to God, I don't trust you. That's saying to God, your word is not enough. And so I look for every kind of way that when I don't know what to pray, that I've got his word right in front of me to help remind me, to prompt me. And I don't know about for you, but for me, sometimes it's easier for me to have faith for other people. Have you ever been there? Like someone tells you about their prodigal or their sick relative, and you're like, you can pray heaven down. Every promise of God comes to your mind, and you are reciting scriptures right and left, and you're like, God's got this. Okay, but we're people, and sometimes when it's somebody or something especially close to our heart, it gets harder. And I know if it's something that's really big to me or somebody that's really close to me, you all, sometimes I just can't even think straight. Have you ever been there? It's like every kind of thought comes at me at the same time. And so when I say, I don't even know what to say, I don't even have the right words, what do I pray? I go to the scripture in Colossians, and you all, there are many of them. This is just one that someone brought to my attention recently, and so I kind of keyed into that, realizing that God was asking me to lean into the scripture and to trust him more. And who doesn't want to bear every kind of good fruit? 
when you think about the fruit of the Spirit, gentleness, long-suffering. Now, we say we want long-suffering, but like who wants <laughs> suffering, right? You want to suffer long and suffer well, right? I want to I do want to be long-suffering because that is a fruit of the Spirit. I do want that, and I recognize that on my own, I cannot do that. Because, you all, it's not just the world that wants everything quick, <laughs> quick fix, easy, and in a hurry. You all, that's our human nature. Like, that is in us, right? We want the path, or am I the only one? Yeah, we want the path of least resistance. We want the creature comforts, all the, oh, the good, easy, this feels so good, this is so wonderful. Sometimes I think, I just want everybody to love everybody and be good. Is that so hard? <laughs> yeah, it is. Without God, it's absolutely impossible. And with him, it still requires effort. It still requires self-discipline and self-control. It still requires faith to believe that God's ways are higher and better than our ways. It still requires that. A disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ, it's that we want to do things God's way and that we recognize that on our own, we can't do it. On our own, we cannot bear every kind of good fruit. On my own, on a really good day, I could probably be patient for about 60 seconds. At, se se at second 61, uh-uh, <laughs> it's all over. It's all over. I need the food in the, the drive-thru right that second. I need the person that I'm talking to, you know, on the online chat. I need them to understand that I need them to straighten out my account now. Please and thank you, right? It says, all the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. And you all, that is the point of the Christian life. It's to know God better and better. And that the more that we know him, the more that his nature and that his character are developed inside of our lives. We know that we all become like whoever we hang out with. That's why the Bible says bad company corrupts good character. Just a couple of years ago, I went to Publix where shopping is a pleasure, and it is. And uh, the person that was ringing up the order, she looked at me and she said, do you have a mother that lives around here? And I said, I do. And she, and she said, is her name Miss Marie? And I said, it is. She says to the other people, that a couple cash registers down, she goes, see, I told you, this is Miss Marie's daughter. <laughs> she said, you look just like her and you talk just like her. She said, your mannerisms are just like her. And I said, okay, great. <laughs> and I just checked out. And you know, here's the thing. I never on purpose have mimicked my mom's mannerisms. I haven't on purpose practiced to talk just like her. That happened because I've been in her presence. Amen. And so with our Christianity, it's that when we're in God's yes. presence, that his patient, that his slow to anger character is formed in us. Not that we're just working really hard to be Christians, because I've done that too, and that's really hard. Because <laughs> without meaning to, sometimes we can make our Christianity legalistic. We can make it behavior modification, because the thing is, we can act patient, and we can be raging inside. <laughs> But the thing that as we pray God's word, as we meditate on it, as we ask him for the strength to live his word, then the patience isn't just, it's really coming from God's nature inside of us where we can extend grace and mercy and that we can live a life that fully honors and pleases God. And I'm not ever against like goal setting or New Year's resolutions, or all those things. Those are great. But what better goal could there be than to live a life that fully honors and pleases God? 
what difference does it make if I have a successful business or, you know, X number of friends on Facebook or whatever the thing is at the time? I guess those things are good somewhat, but they're temporal things. But the eternal thing is to live a life that fully honors and pleases God. And then it goes on in verse 11, and it says, We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so that you will have all of the endurance and patience that you need. And that's Colossians 1, verse 11. So you think about that. All the endurance and patience we need. Scripture is telling us that to run this race, that we need endurance and that we need patience. So think about it. If someone says to us, we're going to talk about God doing a miracle in your life, Signs and wonders. Oh, does not a smile come to your face and heart? I am all about miracles, signs, and wonders. And you know, good news, the Bible says that miracles, signs, and wonders follow those who believe. I believe that. If I say we're going to talk about patience and endurance and having all the patience and endurance you need, like we don't get quite as happy about that. (laughs) Right? Because We can't do that on our own, right? It's hard to be patient in a world that's hurry up. And you all, even in the work world and even at church, we are just hurrying, 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 and we want everybody else to hurry just like us. How are you today? Busy? How are you? Busy? 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 We're hurrying. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're doing the other thing. And this verse yet says, I'm praying that you will have all of the endurance and the patience you need because God knows that we need endurance and patience. And yes, in our Christian life, we're going to see signs. We're going to see wonders. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see suddenlies and breakthroughs. And God amaze us. Yes, yes, yes. All of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. And in between those miracles and signs and wonders and the hills and the valleys, patience and endurance in vast supply that can only come from the Holy Spirit. And you all, if I could give you three steps to do that, I would do that because I want patience right now too, right? (laughs) But it's about a relationship with Christ. And patience and endurance are a work of the Holy Spirit. This is where we have to lean in. And for me, as I told you, I take pictures of the scriptures on my phone so that it's easy to get to, that if I can't get to BibleGateway.com, I've got that picture of that verse right that second, and I can look at that. Memorizing scripture has been something that I have just increased my attention to do I kind of had given that up. You know, it's like I read the Bible, but I didn't work to memorize it anymore. And I became aware that this is God's word. And if I love him and if I want to grow and if I really want complete knowledge of his will and all spiritual understanding, then the more scripture that I have in me, the more the Holy Spirit can bring that to me in that moment of need. The more the Holy Spirit can Give me that download when I'm in need and even when I'm on the top of the mountaintop. And you all, I love those seasons of my life where it's a season of strengthening and peace. Right now, if I had to define the season of life, I would say it's probably more of suffering. But I've asked God to make me gracious and long-suffering. I've asked him to give me all of the endurance and the patience that I need And however long it takes to get to the root of what I'm going through, yes, Lord. Because I can't just pray about symptoms and what I think I see. I want them to go way down deep and get to whatever that is. You know, for a simple example, some of you might have people in your family who run late to family get-togethers. Any of you have that? You know, and I'm a punctual person, so I don't like tardy. And I, I don't really understand tardy. But there are people that I'm related to that if the family get together is at noon, I say, you know, come at 11. Because I know they'll, that means they'll be there 12, 15, 12, 30. 
<laughs> and they're gonna tell me about traffic and this happened and they had to put air in their tire and it's like, do you not understand that food is on the table and that everybody else is waiting on you? And so I think it's fine for me to pray that they won't be tardy. But you know, here's the thing, I don't know what underlies all of that. Honestly, I don't think that these particular people think that there's a problem at all. I think I'm the one that has the problem. And so I'm just like, God, help me to accept people right where they are and to embrace that people are different and go down deep with me so that I don't have to be mean and ugly and irritated and impatient because it's not like it's something new, like this has been going on for years. And obviously the person's living, breathing, doing well, but I was ticked off about it. So it's like sometimes these prayers change other people and sometimes they change us. And it is not the world according to Monica Schmelter. <laughs> this is God's world and this is his word. And developing endurance and patience, transformation comes, the Bible says in Romans 12:2 by renewing our minds, by allowing him to change the way we think. When we look at words in the Bible like endurance, wait, be still, patience, typically people don't break out in a standing ovation. <laughs> we break out in a standing ovation at words like miracles, signs, wonders, and I do too. And I love all of that. Those are expressions of God's great and mighty power. And boy, do I love an answered prayer and a miracle like anybody else. But I do want to learn to love God more than those gifts and those things. And I do want God's nature to be developed in me more than anything else that I would be like him that when Jesus comes back or when I go to be with him, that he can say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. That he can say, you trusted me. Not that I or that you, that we could do all of this perfectly, we cannot. We all know that our frames, the Bible says, are but dust. It says that our lives are a vapor, a mist, that they are a little while, and then we are no more. But he says that he loves us and he says that he'll never leave us and he says that he'll never forsake us. So even in all of these things that stretch us beyond what we can endure and these situations that seem larger than life and these situations that make my energizer bunny mind go nuts, so if I don't stop it. And I say that only because if that's something that you experience, you can in Jesus name stop that. You don't have to put up with that and live that as a lifestyle. We can also ask God to help us appreciate the process. And verses 12 and 14 in Colossians 1 say this, May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So you think about in the middle of this prayer that talks about complete knowledge of God's will with spiritual wisdom and understanding so that we could live lives that fully honor and please the Lord so that we can bear fruit all kinds of good fruit. It goes on to say, may you be filled with joy, always giving thanks to the Father who's enabled us to share in the inheritance of his children who live in the light. So in the middle of all this stretching, taxing, overwhelming stuff, in the middle of an energizer bunny mind that just wants to, uh, I can always be joyful always giving thanks to the Father because he has enabled me and he has enabled you to share in the inheritance of his children who live in the light. You all, the inheritance that we have is worth far more than anything that we're going through on this earth. And his light does dispel the darkness. 
And it says that he's transferred us out of the darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, the marvelous light, in the middle of long lines and in the middle of waiting and in the middle of praying for prodigals and in the middle of sick children and in the middle of big bills, he has enabled us to share in the inheritance of his children who live in the light and he purchased our freedom and he forgave our sins. This is like really good news. This prayer, when you don't know what to pray, covers every single base that there could possibly be. I don't think that this means that you have to throw away your prayer journal and not ask God specifically. I think that's good. It amazes me when I go back to my prayer journals at the things that I will journal and go back six months later and be like, you know, God answered that in an amazing way. I'm not even sure that I recognized that at the time. And then I say, forgive me, Father. Yes, yes, yes. But this life is just not overcoming these hurdles and the prayer list and the laundry list that we have, though he does all of that. It is about getting to know him and getting to know him better and better and having his nature and his character formed in us. And quite honestly, that process, it's joyful and it's a little bit painful because sometimes we got junk in there. And sometimes he asks us to let go of things that we want to hold on to, like control. Sometimes he says to us, I want you to let go of worry, and I want you to fully trust in me. And we're like, I trust you. Help me trust you, right? Like five seconds later, I trust you, Lord. And then somebody does something, you think, oh, what am I going to do? You all, that's part of the human experience. But we don't celebrate that. And we don't stay there. We acknowledge that we all have these thoughts. We all have the common struggle. Until we go to be with Jesus, the flesh, the weight of sin, it's going to nip at us. But through the power of Christ in us, we can nip that in the bud. We can stop that in its track. We can take that worrisome thought captive and throw it away. And we can begin to celebrate that we walk in patience and that we walk with endurance and that we have complete knowledge of his will along with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And you can take your prodigals and the larger than life situations and the huge bills and all those struggles and worries and you can pray this prayer when you don't know what else to pray and we can pray it over ourselves and know that He's got our best interest at heart and always know when you don't know what to pray, pray his word. It's 100% his will. We're out of time. We say goodbye and God bless you. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on your screen. Be sure to mention the program number. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org.